So as I'm going through like these little treasure chests as I wander around like the RPG of 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 the of the Falcoin network, I um like UCAM was the next one, and that was when I got very like slightly overexcited, to be honest. I think I just like randomly pinged your colleague Boris and was like, What is this? Because UCAN is a capability based authority system. And people who listen to this podcast before know that I am a member of the capability cult, right? Like it's for me, uh, I mean, not, not really me, but like, you know, when I was doing my initial research, anybody I met who was smarter than me, much smarter than me, would go, well, the thing we need is a capability-based, you know, authorization system. Um, so at the, at the foundation, I was like, okay, this is what we need to find and support. And then the next week I stumbled on UCAN, which again is like another, like another part of this puzzle. Um, I always challenge anybody in the OCAP capability space to explain it because we're only, it's, it's a hard one, right? It's like quantum computing or something, but like we've spent decades trying to explain this to people. Okay, so your turn. How do you explain you can to somebody who's just coming into this space? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'll tell you about you can, and, and then I'll, I'll take a crack at capability-based auth systems right. sort of broadly. So uh, you can, uh, for those familiar with OAuth, it's similar to OAuth, so it uses this uh, token format called J J JWT that's built into basically every, you know, all the tooling, right? Um, and it lets you describe what a user is allowed to do um, and in a way that is not tied to a particular server. So uh, UCAN uh, is an acronym for User Controlled Authorization Network. And so it lets me create, for example, a WinFS or, um, you know, uh, a chunk of time on my processor, on my computer, or you know, uh, the ability to send email, literally anything, and say, you know what, I want to delegate to you the ability to send email on my behalf for the next three days, let's say, right. or I want to give you write access to this particular directory. And now it doesn't depend on that living in any particular place or dialing into a particular server, which leads to centralization. Auth is a major component of centralization. Right. Um, it lets the auth travel around with the data itself. And, and move any, anywhere. So uh, capability-based systems, most people are familiar with uh, what are called access control lists, ACLs. Uh, and essentially it's uh, a list of who's allowed to do what. So the, the analogy for this is it's like a bouncer at a club and you, know, you go and you're like, hey, I, I'd like to be let in. And they look at the list and they're like, are you on the cool person list, yes or no? And if you wanna update that, you have to go and talk to the bouncer and be like, hey, actually, they are allowed in, right? Or, uh, no, they're not allowed in anymore, right? And, and write this down. The uh, capability method is often described as uh, keys or like tickets. So uh, later today, uh, I'm going to go see the Barbie movie. And all, they don't care to see my ID. They don't care who I am. They care that I have a valid ticket that they can scan and go in. And if I can't make it, I could give the ticket to Boris and he'd go in my stead. Right. right, and that's uh, the direction of the relationship is is backwards now because it's no longer about who you are; it's about what you can do, and the authorization travels around with the holder of that thing. So in in UCAN, there's a little bit of extra cryptographic magic that makes this additionally secure. In addition to these, um, uh, you know, how, how the thing the authority flows through the system. But the main thing to note is in a capability based system. Um, they, it's like tickets, they can travel around. You can make copies of your ticket. We're stretching the metaphor a little bit, and hand them off to other people rather than having to go to some central list and update everything in one place. Right. The downside, uh, so there's a couple different ways of doing capability-based systems. Um, they can express everything that ACLs can, plus more. Um, the downside is that you can't necessarily get a complete picture of absolutely everything. You can say like, well, here's who I delegated things to, right. and I'm allowed to see that part of the system. I can't see the entire world because, you know, maybe somebody's using it offline, maybe... Because it's um, decentralized, right? It's decentralized, it's, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So how did I do? Was that... Uh, that uh, was... So 
That's the best kind of analogy because it actually made me think of a practical occasion where this happened. So um, <laughs> I'm always like doing these name dropping things, right? So so um, we were we had a Filecoin event um, and it was it sort of had an after party and someone messaged going, Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia is in town and we were like, oh shit, we should get him like we should like get let him go into our party and we couldn't get to the bouncer to tell them so it endless complexity very kind of embarrassing kind of moment of like is the bouncer going to throw out Jimmy Wales or whatever and at the same time like people were getting into the party by kind of just convincing the bouncer that they were the person who they said they were. And I'm sitting there going, God, if only we had like a capability thing, we could have really easily minted Jimmy Wales with like a little QR code or something. And like it would be much harder because you're leaning on what your strengths are in a decentralized system, right? Like we have super strong cryptographic proofs that we can do but we have but but we we have no sort of central trustable authority and our the argument is is that neither does anyone else right like if you if you go okay our trustable authority is that like we're going to keep the list ultimately means that you're trusting the bouncer and bouncers are really nice people i want to be let into clubs in the future but that's a single point of failure, right? Like own the bouncer, own the entire uh, uh, entire system. So good. I'm going to use you. I I may have to change him to be some like analog to to a famous person. But okay, so we got to you cans. So basically now you have something that is like Dropbox, but more, right? Because you can start passing this stuff around, and and I just want to spend a little bit of time talking about this because I think it's 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 significant in the like you're not building Dropbox actually right these are just kind of demos of a protocol of a of a of a standard right and in fact the place that I see you can being used most visibly right now is in a separate project in the Falcon Extended Cinematic Universe which is Web three storage. Um, and so they picked it up and now you can do stuff with Web3 storage, which is basically kind of like a, a thing that lets you upload data to Filecoin and then share it over, over IPFS. People use it for NFTs and this kind of thing. Um, but, but, but now you can do this like crazy super OAuth delegation where you can go, actually, I'm going to let you, I'll, I'll pay for this, but you can upload to this bit of it or this email address, or we can share it. Um, did you, is, is, have, have you reached the point where this is all kind of super compatible? And like, if somebody is doing something on web three storage, they can do something elsewhere. And is that a useful thing to do? Or do these things end up kind of just being like proprietary to their own systems, but we're all, learning the same stuff and you know f fixing the same bugs right mm -hmm. yeah um so one of the major benefits of having the auth travel around with your requests directly is anybody who's using you can automatically interoperates so okay. that might be mainly happening you know so uh, has Vision and uh, Web3 Storage done a direct integration on our back ends? No. But you could do uh, on the front end, say, ah, I want Vision to update the DNS and I want um, Daghouse to update the data. And actually, I, I want Daghouse are the people, the people uh, who make Web3 Storage. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, Sorry. Yeah. Um, but uh, because all that it cares about is, you know, is there. Uh, access to a particular resource, right? It doesn't care, do you have an account with us? All that cares about is that, you know, as we delegate between users, um, were you delegated access to this volume of storage or this DNS record or whatever the thing is? 
Um, and in fact, we've talked with a, a bunch of teams in the ecosystem about also then doing this on the back end. So you can imagine something where you know, uh, Fission runs our own uh, domain name servers, right? So you want to update um, a website to the latest uh, you know, CID, for example. You could upload data to another provider, say Daghouse, and they could then turn around and update the domain name that's hosted oh. with Fission automatically without us having to know that anything special is happening. Right. Without having to make these two requests. Um, and so as soon as you, like, without having to do pre-negotiation is, is when we, we normally say it. So um, you can make these kinds of relationships with traditional systems like OAuth, but you have to pre-provision the relationship. And in a UCAN system, it doesn't care. You can just show up and be like, I have a valid UCAN, please do the thing for me. Right. Right. So I've definitely sort of hit something similar where I'm footling around with, so you have um, immutable data that you can put on IPFS, but the, in order to sort of have something like a website where you can go, go to this CID and the website will be there and it will be the latest version of the website, you do this thing called IPNS, which is kind of a pointer to immutable data that can change. And I'm always like, okay, so I have a private key that, that lets me update that pointer. Uh, like, I don't want to be the person kind of, I mean, I kind of want to keep the key because that's the key to everything, like uh, owning the domain name. But I want other people to be, at, I don't want to bother doing this like locally. Um, is that what it, is that what it gives you? Is that yeah. Um, so IPNS, I'll, I'll sort of pull it apart in, into two halves. Yeah. For um, there's sort of what I would call like true IPNS that's built into clients like uh, Kubo, where you can publish records over time, and it's just associated with your public key, and you know that the updates are correct because you can sign them. The other side is actually technically DNS link, but People often mm -hmm. complete the two because it's this, you know, mutable pointer yeah. idea to say, like, I'm going to, like, you know, CIDs are immutable. You can't change them, but we can update this pointer over time. Right. right. Um, and so that's putting a record in DNS. And so then if you have this in the correct record and you go to, you know, example.com, it'll serve the website that sits behind that CID. Um, DNS link, um, you need to basically... Uh, run a server that manages those DNS updates, right. you know, a bit of a headache, and uh, or you use a managed service. Um, uh, IPNS is nice because, uh, you know, the version in Kubo is nice because you can do this yourself, but it's just one key. So right. there's been um, a number of proposals to add UCAN to IPNS, to basically say, uh, I delegate you the right to update stuff in my namespace. Right. Um, so in, in fact, the... Um, Web3 storage folks have a uh, sort of a, a shim uh, proposal uh, where you could um, basically uh, wrap a service around a Kubo node that knows, oh, okay, yeah, I can check the UCAM chain, and then you know we don't actually have to change anything about IPNS. And then there are more, um, uh, we'll say, uh, extreme upgrades uh, that use that actually gossip the UCAMs around to the entire network so that you can make these updates without having to republish all the time and without having to um, uh, check for the particular signature, as long as you can trace it back to the root of this UCAM chain, you're all good. Um, right. Something uh, Blaine on the Fission team has been uh, working on specs for and has a proof of concept um, in code that you know we're in, in the towering stack of things that we're working on, we really <laughs> want to get, get to this one, but um, something uh, he calls uh, the name name system. Uh -huh. uh, or an NNS. And uh, it's essentially taking this in even further and saying, well, instead of putting it at your public key, which is not friendly, it's not human readable, what if you could root that in your email address or in your website or, you know, really anywhere and then have IPNS running underneath that? So you could say, hey, check out, uh, you know, this file. It's at my email address slash, you know, vacation photos and actually have that resolve. 